We have so much information in every field of knowledge that it is virtually impossible to uh, keep track of, uh, to basically to, to have an idea of even the state of the art in not only a discipline, an entire discipline, but in many sub-disciplines. It is impossible. So, but th there is a parallel question here. Uh, we, of course, know that not all knowledge is of equal importance. There is a hierarchy of knowledge, and many of these new informations, which will generate new knowledge, are not actually so relevant, and maybe sometimes are even uh, confusing instead of enlightening. So there is a vast amount of information and there is this problem of how to organize it. And the second question, in my view, is apparently at first glance is not related with the question that I have just posed, but I think that in a deeper, uh, from a deeper perspective it is actually narrowly connected. It is the following question. What is the role of philosophy in our time? What can philosophy do? So I will, base, I will try to uh, deal with both question, questions. Regarding the first question, I believe that even if it is certain that there is a vast amount of information in each discipline and that division of labor, division of intellectual labor, specialization is actually one of the driving forces behind uh, scientific progress, uh, a single person cannot handle so much knowledge, so this generates the need for cooperation, for a specialization, for uh, deepening into areas and sub-areas within each discipline, and this is a very positive force in uh, the intellectual development of, of uh, humanity. But in any case, there is also an aspiration, I think, in the human mind to find unity, a unitary view. Uh, in science, we can think of physics as a different discipline from chemistry, as a different discipline from biology, but we would be deceiving ourselves because we know that reality is a single entity. It is not split into physics, chemistry, biology. The same reality is capable of generating chemical processes and uh, finally in, in, in evolutionary scale biological processes. So we also need a unitary framework, which is the scientific view of the world, and not only the natural sciences, but also the social sciences and even the humanities. How can we integrate this knowledge? And I think that one of the itineraries to accomplish this goal is to identify the key, the fundamental notions that within each discipline show the highest explanatory potential. That is to say that with that idea we are capable of encompassing the highest number of phenomena. If by a theory we understand a conceptual mapping of reality in which the elements of reality have a counterpart in a conceptual thinking, a, a powerful explanatory notion would be that which manages to explain many different elements of reality from the same principle. I am thinking, for example, of the notion of natural selection. It is a very powerful explanatory tool, like, of course, many other categories in biology or in physics or in the social sciences and in the humanities. So how can these fundamental categories be integrated as to generate a unitary view, a conceptual itinerary that helps us go from the simplest to the most complex realities and it is clear that the definition of complexity is not very easy and sometimes may seem too subjective. We are all familiar with uh, the famous pyramid of sciences, physics on the bottom and um, in a sense uh, psychology would be on the top but even beyond psychology we would have the interaction of minds, sociology and uh, human creativity. I mean it is not easy to uh, identify how that pyramid should be organized. It is very easy on the bottom. Physics is the basis of chemistry. Chemistry is the basis of biology. Biology the basis of biology is the basis of neuroscience. Neuroscience is the basis of psychology. Psychology is the basis of sociology. Well, this can be the framework. But for instance, within that uh, broad framework, where should we place fundamental disciplines like logic and mathematics? Are they on the bottom of physics? 
or are they creations of the mind and hence should be on the top? This is an interesting question. I think that they are both on the bottom, logic, and there is a logic in the universe, and at the top, the logic of the mind, which reproduces the logic of the universe. Of course, this will be a different topic for a presentation. And the, another consideration that I think should be made is whether this idea of the pyramid of knowledge entails reductionism. Um, in my view, it does not, because reductionism would be the, this dream of some physicists to speak of a final theory, which is basically to reduce everything to physics. Uh, I don't think that goal is attainable. First of all, because um, even in physics, we don't know what the fundamental principles are. There is no unification of physics. We don't even know what matter is. And we have vast parts of the universe which are not explained by the current physical models like dark matter, uh, dark energy. So, first of all, we should unify physics, and maybe later we can think of unifying, of integrating, of reducing the rest of the disciplines. And in any case, instead of reducing, I think it's a matter of condensing complexity. We cannot aspire to draw a one-to-one -one map in which each element of reality is actually reproduced by thinking. That would be uh, impossible, unattainable, uh, uh, so to speak. Uh, I, I don't even know if it would be a desirable goal. What we want is to condense as much complexity as possible into concepts and concepts into conceptual systems. And re concerning the second question, what is the role of philosophy? I think that it is important for this task of integrating knowledge because philosophy has always attempted to be some sort of synthesis of knowledge. This is the debate. Does philosophy have a body of knowledge of its own? I am skeptical about that idea. Of course, there are some parts of philosophy like logic in which we can identify a body of knowledge. But most areas of philosophy are reflections about other areas of knowledge. So philosophy in this sense is more of a meta-science than a science. It is more about a, the reflection about the fundamental principles of reality and thinking. And I think that philosophy has a lot to say about how to integrate knowledge. Uh, if I can simplify, if you let me simplify, I would say that there are like three great views of philosophy in Western thinking. The first one would contemplate philosophy as a metaphysical system that is capable of expanding our knowledge, so that the philosopher can design systems of thought which uh, illuminate us in our knowledge of and interpretation of reality. For example, this would be the position of Hegel. For Hegel, philosophy has really a body of knowledge of its own. Or even in recent decades, uh, Alfred North Whitehead with his uh, philosophy of process. This is a fascinating view of philosophy. I must say that personally I am very... Um, I feel a attraction for this uh, view of philosophy because uh, it is hard not to uh, wish to develop a philosophical system. No, we all want to have our own philosophical systems. But being realistic, I think that with the progress of science, it is very hard that philosophy can actually contribute with specific information to the different sciences. I don't think that's possible because it doesn't have an empirical methodology. If we use an empirical methodology, we are in the natural sciences or in the social sciences. A second view of philosophy would be philosophy as an interpretation, a, a set of creative interpretations of what other great thinkers have said. This is, in many respects, the view of uh, some postmodern authors and authors in the hermeneutical tradition in Western, in continental philosophy. So basically philosophy, what a philosopher does is to go back to great authors, to reinterpret them and to find creative hermeneutics of their work. Well, this is also legitimate. I don't very much agree with uh, this view. I think that that's only a part of philosophy. Philosophy has also to be propositional, to construct a system, not only to uh, interpret or to criticize what others have said, but it is clear that this is also a very important part of philosophy. And another 
view of philosophy would be the one that uh, I have described previously, which is philosophy as, as an instrument for integrating knowledge and exploring conceptual, the conceptual scope of many scientific discoveries. Philosophy as a theory of science. Philosophy as a theory of both the natural sciences, the social sciences and the humanities. Philosophy as a meta-science, which instead of incorporating new information, basically what it does is to help organize that information and to extract all potential consequences from that information to many different fields of thinking and action. That's personally the view that I would maintain. Philosophy as an instrument for exploring the creative possibilities of the human mind in the design of more encompassing and sophisticated conceptual systems. There is this beautiful uh, sentence by Alfred North Whitehead, uh, which uh, at least uh, inspires me. Uh, he said, our minds are finite, yet even in these circumstances of finitude, we are surrounded by possibilities that are infinite, and the purpose of life is to grasp as much from that infinitude. So, even in the finitude of our knowledge, we still have the potential infinitude of imagination, creativity. Philosophy, I think, is in a sense a bridge between that finitude and that infinitude, between what we know and what we can know and we can imagine. Thank you very much.